There's winners and losers. There's no in between. No. But people don't get it. If you think the price of winning is too high, wait till you get the bill for regret. And that bill is generational. And a lot of individuals are passing that bill on from one generation to the next, to the next, to the next. There's a moment in everybody's life. There's a dark forest and a dark moment. How you handle that dark forest, how you handle that dark moment determines everything. And you want to know the people that go from good to great to unstoppable? They didn't run from that dark moment. What's up, Well Builders? Today, I've got a guy that I have wanted to interview for a long time, mainly because, as you know, I'm, I'm, I'm all about sports. And there's not many people in the entrepreneurial world that understand sports, especially at a level that this man does. This man I first saw back in 2018 at 10X Growth Conference, and... I became aware of what he was doing from his book, Relentless. He was Michael Jordan's coach, Kobe's coach, Dwayne Wade's coach, and many others. And uh, now I'm lucky enough to have him speaking at the next WealthCon. I've got Tim Grover. What's up, man? Everything's excellent. How about yourself, Ryan? I'm good, man. I'm, I'm just excited to be here with you. Well, you should be better than good, man. Yeah. No, you said, when, you, when did you start settling for good? You're right, dude. I'm doing great. There and you I'm go. ready to roll and I'm ready <laughs> to stomp some throats and just make things happen. There you go tap into the darkness and let's go. Yes, right. Yeah. So I actually just read Winning Again. Um, that was your second book, right? Yes. And, you know, just to refresh my memory on everything. And I resonate with it because for me as an athlete growing up my entire life, everything I've ever wanted to do, there's only one, there's only one thing, you win. You, there's winners and losers. That's there's, it. There's no in between. No. But people don't get it. Yeah, people don't get it. You know what? You want to get rewarded for th things that just for participating. And it, it, that's not how life works. You know, you're judged by your wins. You're judged by, you're judged by your losses. You're judged by your effort. You're judged by the end results that you, uh, that you develop and you put out there. It doesn't matter who, it doesn't matter who you are. There's always going to be a winner. There's always going to be a loser. You look in your bank account, either you're winning <laughs> or, or you're losing. Your team is either winning or losing in your life. You're either winning or you're losing. It's all the stuff in between that people like to make excuses for and like to justify, well, this is why I'm in. No, you're either winning or you're losing. Yeah. That's no, it. And 100%. only you can determine which place you're in. It's not for somebody else to say, you know, you, what well, somebody thinks you're winning in, so, in something and you feel like you're losing in it, that's up to you. Because your level of winning may be completely higher than somebody else's and your definition of losing could be completely different than somebody else's. But as long as there's no excuses involved in there. Would you say that what we're really talking about here is standards? Yes, yeah, standards is something that you you talk about. But I say, you know what? Standards is an easy way is an easy way out. Everybody talks about, well, I have high, I, I have high standards. All right. Well, what does that actually mean? Mm -hmm. Are you living up to those stand? Are you living up to those standards? And you know, people define those standards. You know, not just what are the high standards. Are you living to those standards? Not every single, not every single day, every single moment in everything that you do. You know, I always say this. People always talk about all in. In order to have standards, you got to be all in. Mm -hmm. You have to be all in. Otherwise, what are what are standards for? They're just words like anything else. Yeah. No, I agree 100%. So obviously you're known for, I mean, you got your big breakthrough by coaching Michael Jordan. And that was what initially drew me to you back in 2018. And, you know, I don't want to talk about that because you've talked about it many, many times. But for me, what I'm really curious about is you achieve all this success as a coach for athletes, like the biggest names in the world. Why not just stick with it and stay in that lane? What made you kind of go on this other side now where now you're you're coaching CEOs and businesses, you're speaking on stages and everything. You know what? It actually, to me, there is no other side. Competing and winning is across the board, no matter what you do. It could be in real estate, yep. like yourself. It could be in coaching. It could be in sports. It could be raising your children. It could be uh, charitable organizations. It could be it could be school teaching, it could be education. Everybody wants to win at the highest level. Everybody wants to make a difference. The only thing is when you get to see a professional athlete, you get to see them in all these different environments. You get to see them in prof uh, uh, 
pressure situations. You get to see them when the lights are the bright, when the lights are the brightest, you get to, you get to watch them deliver results that everyone's capable of delivering it, but no one knows how, how can they be going through a family crisis and still and still deliver an unbelievable, uh, unbelievable performance. How could they be going through, you know, a family issue or something going on and still show up and not only show up at work, outperform how they would nor- normally perform. So, and that's all from the neck, that's all from the neck up. See, there's a difference between, everyone loves to talk about standards. There's physical standards and there's a mental, there's a mental standard. People are willing to pay the price for a physical standard. You can go in, you know, okay, I know how to eat. I'll eat, I'll eat, cor- I'll eat correctly. I'll go work out, uh, do my meditation, whatever, whatever it drinks. I'll hydrate and all that other stuff. So those standards are easily developed, but the mental standard changes as your environment internally and externally changes. Yeah. And people aren't, f- you have to be flexible with those. You have to be able to be flexible with those standards. You know, things, people get very rigid. You, with physical standards, you can be extremely rigid and get your results, but also you can damage yourself. With mental standards, you have to be a little bit more flexible and be able to adjust to the price of winning on that particular day. Yeah. One thing I've always said, especially as, you know, I've become a coach now, right? Like I was just so used to being coached my whole life. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, I coach entrepreneurs and real estate people and, you know, all these things. And one thing I have realized is that people don't count the cost. And it's like, I tried to really break down how do you know how much it costs, right? Because so-and-so says, oh, dude, you got to work 80 hours a week to do this. Mm -hmm. So-and-so says, well, actually, you don't have to do, you could do it this way, right? Like there's lots of ways to to reach a goal, right? And one thing I just started to think about was this idea that why do people quit way before, like at what point makes somebody quit something? And like my ideology has become that if your purpose isn't big enough that will exceed the cost of whatever it is you want to do, you won't do it. At some point, like if the purpose and the vision just does not make it worthwhile, you quit. And I think people are like, oh, well, I want to, you know, make more money. And it's like, well, why? And they don't because they just quit. It's hard. It's hard yeah. to make more money. It's supposed to be. It's all, and, and the more you win and the more successful you get. Listen, you started off as the person that flips houses. Yeah. Then you got into the coaching space and the entrepreneur space and the education space. And now the throwing the event space, uh, throwing events. So all these things, all these things, when you start stacking those wins with each win comes a higher price. You have to pay a little, you have to pay a little bit more. Some days you pay a little less. Some days you pay a little, some days you pay a little bit more. You may have to pay a little less on this side of your business, but you got to pay a little bit more on on, on this side of your business. So people get, and they bundle it together and think they can all throw it in together and be like, well, if I spend 80 hours here, I can spend 80 hours here. I can, no, no, it, it doesn't work like that. What demands your attention that particular, during that particular moment? What when, uh, when winning is looking at you and it's saying, this is what I need you to focus in on. Can you go all in on that? Or are you busy still kind of looking out of the, out of the corner of your eye? You can't do anything to the fullest extent to its best capabilities. If you're already thinking about something else or, or you're thinking about next, we always used to ha- have this thing in our, with our guys. I never used to let them look at the, the game ahead of the game or the next game or the next game. This is this is the only game that matters. I don't care who we're playing. I don't care if you're playing the world champs. I don't care if you're playing the the worst team in in the league. This is the fo- this is this is the price of winning today, mm. right here. This is the price of winning. Tomorrow is going to be completely different. The next day it's going to be it's going to be completely different. And we have a lot of individuals that you know when they when they quit, it's the cost of focus that gets too much for them. Mm. You know, everybody looks at the external cost. Yeah, there's prices of external costs, but there's the cost of focus is the most costly thing that you can provide because we have time. I always tell people, you have, pl- you have plenty of time, all right? But what happens is people manage time, and I always tell them, don't manage time. 
manage focus. If you manage focus, you will always have more time. And if you constantly manage your focus, it won't allow you to quit. How long can somebody be locked in for? I've, <laughs> Kobe was locked in for 20 years. 20 years, like just every moment of the day, this dude's locked in. It was just, he was just locked, he was just locked in. Mm. You know, the play, you can, there are breaks in between. There's got to be joy in everything that you do. So people think when you have to be locked in, it has to be this laser intense thing, constant 24 seven. No, it, it doesn't. Listen, any laser beam, if you constant, if you constantly lasered into something and it's just, con you're going to burn out. You yeah. are going, you are going to, you are going to be burned out. Keep your eye on that prize, whatever it is, but there are times where you have to adjust the intensity. No different than working out. You cannot work out at the same intensity every, in order to get the optimal results. If you're looking at your business, you're looking at the way I did with athletes, you know, we would come into the, we would come into the workout facility and people would come in, oh, that wasn't an intense workout. How can you be, let me do this. Yeah. All right. You don't understand, you don't understand the peaks and valleys <laughs> yeah. of the mental and the physical intensity that that were that were at. It's just like a roller coaster. If you only got on a roller coaster and it kept going up, 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 up. Wealth builders, if you're finally ready to get off the fence and start investing in real estate or scale your business, now is the time. Interest rates are projected to drop multiple times this year, which means prices are gonna go up and it is a great time to flip houses, to wholesale, and to start buying again. So if you're trying to get that first deal or you're trying to scale to the next level, we want to help you out. Make sure you go to wealthyinvestor.com. You can book a free call with our team today to see which program can help you get to the next level. We can partner with you and help you get that first deal. We'll even close the deal for you, or we can teach you how to build your business, how to build a company, how to start hiring people. It does not matter which stage of the game you're at. We want to help you out. So go to wealthyinvestor.com and see us today. Yeah. And let me, let me add to that point because you know, I came from a sport where there there really were no days off. You play 162 games in like 170 days. Yeah. You know, no other sport is like that. And as I got into business, you know, the status quo was, well, bro, bro, if you want to be successful, you got to put in the 80 hour work weeks and do this. I actually never did that to get to this point. Um, for me, I and, you know, I know you're not like a balanced guy, but for me, I understood burnout. And I watched a lot of guys do it in sports and life and everything else. And I was like, I'm going to be far more efficient having a rest day, you know, not just only thinking about my business 24 seven, because like for me, if I take Sunday off, Monday is like my most creative day of the week. Cause I'm like, bro, I'm refreshed. Even Sunday, I'm thinking of ideas, but it's not like I'm putting in these stressful hours of not thinking, um, or I just can't be innovative because I'm so tired. I'm so just like going through the motions time and time again. And I know you said Kobe had that problem of he wanted to work so much. And you're like, hey, we got to like pull back you a little put, bit. You got to put you got to pull back. But he, with him or and even with individuals, they get to a certain place doing that. And that's the only way they know how. Mm. So they literally think that if I slack off that somebody else is going to, it's bad. It's, yeah, somebody else is going to uh, catch me. So it's a hard, it's a hard for, thing for them to, pro to process, but this is where I will say it takes, you see it, baseball, this is prevalent all the time. Oh, you're overthinking. Just go up to, don't think, you know, just go out there and play. Don't think you're yeah. thinking too much at the, you're thinking too much at the plate. Well, it takes years and years of thinking not to be able to think. Mm. Yeah. It takes years and years of thinking not to be able to think. It takes years and years of training intensely, pushing your body to that limit, knowing that I don't need to do that every single day now. Yeah. It seems like Kobe figured that out later on in his career. He did. Yeah. He, he did. And, and that's what allowed him to play for 20 years because there's no way you could have kept that, you could have kept that pace. You know, you, they just yeah. had, last year they had the Formula One race here. The cars aren't, they're not revving <laughs> at the same speed all the way around. Yeah. They downshift, they upshift. It's just like your life. Training, business, everything. You got to know when to upshift. You got to know when to, when to downshift. Yeah. You can't, you cannot be in the, you cannot be in the red all the time. And this is where I would say about burnout. Most of the time, what I've experienced 
is you don't get burned out from doing the things you enjoy and love. It's carrying the weight of others, carrying the weight of things you don't want to do, carrying the burdens of other individuals, uh, carrying the weight of your past that forces you to burn out. Kobe never burned out from basketball. MJ never burned out from from uh, from ba- from basketball. You know, these listen. At some point, your legs give out. You can no longer be that. You can no longer be that professional professional athlete. But burnout comes from not from doing the thing that you or things that excite you every single morning. It comes from all the other external stuff, you know, family drama, relationship, relationship drama, drama that you create your drama that you create yourself, demons that you're not willing to deal deal with. That for that causes burnout. Mm. And then the work becomes a distraction. Yeah. Yeah. I don't believe I've never I've been at this longer than most in, most individuals. We do we do a lot of stages every every single year, and I've never felt burned out from it, from any of these things. Now, do other do I have other distractions that enter my life? Yeah, and that that has the ability to affect what I'm doing what I'm doing here. I I do the best I can not to let it. But if I feel like I get up one morning and I, it's not because I'm not ready to speak or I'm not ready to do a podcast or I'm not ready to train, it's the other stuff. And I say, okay, listen, in order for my flame to be lit the highest here, I got to go, I got to go put out this fire. Over yeah. Here. You know, you look at, you look at business. I always say everybody wants to set the world on fire. Well, the first rule of success is setting the world on fire. But after you set the rule, uh, world on fire, you better know how to put those fires out because <laughs> they're coming. Yeah. They are. And you look at, as you've progressed through your this entrepreneurial space, how many more fires have you had to put out? Dude, so many more problems. So many. Way more responsibility, way more headaches, lawsuits, failures, everything. That, that's what I'm saying. It's, yeah. It's, listen, it's, it's easy to strike a match. <laughs> it's, it's much difficult to control how that flame is going to burn. Yeah. You don't know how quickly it's going to go. Yeah. So it's interesting we're talking about this because I think if people were to read Relentless or Winning, a conclusion they might come to is, well, bro, you just got to give it your all. Like you just literally have to go all in and just do the things you're talking about that might lead to burnout. I could see how people would get this misconception. And for me, one thing I've always said is like, okay, I spent eight years playing minor league baseball for no money going for it and making that like my identity. And then when it doesn't work out, you really look at yourself and you're like, wow. But see, I'm going to cut you off. That It did work out. It just yeah. didn't work out in baseball. Right. So that's the thing. Mm-hmm. So it, ju- it, it it may have not. Listen, I had a dream of playing professional basketball. Not, not, not a chance in hell it was going to happen. Mm-hmm. All right. But am I going to, am I going to look at everything and say, yeah, oh, well, it did. Well, it led me into. Everything into else. into these into these other things and being competitive and wanting something so bad that every for nine years you chased it you gave everything you had but you also knew when to pivot yes there's individuals that don't know when and when you said they just quit they just they just quit and they just give up on everything yeah instead of taking what taking the taking your past your wounds in your past all right how, how are you going to use those how are you going to use those wounds are they going to sit in your head or are you going to make the, or are they going to make you wiser those wounds that you had in baseball the wounds that i had growing up di- different things all right they made us wiser even at a young age you know you always say oh you're you're way wiser behind uh, uh, than your years well, you don't have to be in your 70s, 80s, and 90s to be wise. You start making the wiser decisions earlier. You got to know, hey, if you can sit there and tell yourself, I gave everything I possibly could every single day. This is just, it's not going to happen. It's time for me to pivot into something else. Most people don't want to have that conversation with themselves because they're so busy listening to everybody else. And man, why you quit now? You could have kept going. If you would have played another two more years, yeah. da, 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 you know, that's their dream for you. Yeah. That's their rea- that's their reality for you. Mm-hmm. But it takes a stronger person to say, you know what? 
it's time to do it's time to do it's time to do something else because i know i gave everything i had and it's just not it's not going to happen yeah and i agree i don't look at my career as a failure by any means it was preparation for what's here and i'm i'm thankful that i did get to be able to say hey i did give it everything i had and i did like retire on my own terms right because most don't get to say that right, right. most say dude i actually was definitely not making the most of it. I was partying. I was just not putting in the work that I needed to. I was immature because I mean, dude, every athlete gets drafted young. You're just very, young, very, we very don't know young. anything. You don't know anything. And so Nothing. I look back now, I'm like, dang, dude, I was 21. I was an idiot. Like, it's crazy that they expect you to be like this mature adult right when you get drafted. So, you know, I think about that. I'm like, all right, I'm thankful. I did truly give it everything I had. I wasn't being stupid. I just Hey, that wasn't good enough. It's all good. That's it. Yeah. I wasn't good enough. That, it's all good. I can live with that. <laughs> no problem. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, but you were good enough to be in a place where others had to consider you that this kid is good enough. Just to even play at the level that you played at. Yeah. You know, just, you know, people always talk about, I say, I always say, you give me the five worst, you give me a list of your five worst Baseball players, basketball players, football players, whatever it is. And they'll outbeat anybody that you know that's not playing professional sports. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know how good you have to be just to get to that level? Yeah. Well, you know, the thing that that taught me was, and you talk about this in the book, it's about just defining what is winning for you, right? Like at the end of the day for MJ... It was purely championships. Yes. Like I got to win championships. Everything else kind of is irrelevant. And, you know, that's not everyone's goal. Kobe was, I guess, similar. Like I want to get one more than MJ. Right. right? Now, Kobe's not going to sit here and be like, oh, that was a failure because I didn't get him. Like, obviously, he had massive success. Um, but I've kind of like realized even for me, like everyone has their own game of winning. And to... To play your own game and not get caught up in someone else's game is the hardest thing. Yeah. Because we live in the social media world of comparison. Like, oh, well, frick, dude, I wasn't doing what, what Ryan's doing or Tim's doing or he's got more properties than me or he's got more followers than me. And like, it just becomes this cycle of, well, do you, do you even want the life that they have and like the cost that they paid to have that life? Like, they ain't got kids. They, they don't got to worry about the things you got to worry about like, that are important to you. Like, how do you define what winning looks like for you without getting caught up on other people's versions that's, of winning? That's each, that's up to the individual that you got to have that, you got to have that conversation with yourself. You know, what you just described is there, there's, we're so busy listening to the shouts of everybody else. What's going on around us? What's on? What's on in our phone? What's on on the uh, on our TVs? What we're watching that it drowns out our voice, and we stop listening and stop trusting the one person that can define what winning means to us. What it what it what it means to me. And you want to see what somebody else's definition of winning is, and it may not be yours. You know, in the book Winning, I talk about. I was like, you know describe winning in one word. And everybody talks about, you know, it's awesome. It's wonderful. It's you feel it's euphoric. It's all this thing. You talk to the the people that have won it, <laughs> have constantly win. They're like, man, it's unapologetic. It's hard. It's, it's dirty. You know, it, it's all, it's all these things that just people don't under, people just don't understand. And that's because they're not speaking that language. They just want to see the, and they want to see the end of winning. They see the end result of winning. You know, they don't see everything else that's in between. And to me, that has a lot to do with, you're so busy chasing, individuals are so busy chasing ghosts and spirits that don't exist instead of dealing with the ghosts and spirits that actually do exist inside of them. And that will give you what the true definition of winning is. Mm. We are launching our newest program over at Wealthy Business that is going to help change the game for businesses and help them scale with purpose. So what exactly does that mean? Well, we wanna help you grow your business, but keep the main things, the main things in your life. The family, the faith, the health, and everything that's important, we don't wanna sacrifice that 
while we help you scale your business. And so we're gonna give you the same tools that I use to continue to grow my businesses to new levels, but still having the time and financial freedom to do the things that are important to me. We're gonna teach you how we do marketing at a high level and generate leads for such low amounts. We're gonna teach you how we convert those leads into sales. We're gonna give you all the softwares we have. We're gonna show you how to build company culture and operations. We're gonna teach you how to make your offers even better. And we're gonna show you how to manage your finances so you know where your money's going and how you can get more to the bottom line. So if that sounds like something you want, go to wealthybusiness.com, book a call with our team today, and we will help you scale with purpose. So how do you, you know, we, we've, we've kind of been talking about it, like, you know, you got family drama, that's causing you to, you know, be not mentally all there during the game, whether the game is sports, business, whatever, right? And for me, winning is like, look, I literally, I want to be the best husband and the best dad. Like, I don't want there to be any debate. I don't want it to be like, oh yeah, Ryan's a great entrepreneur and he's a great, you know, podcast guy. But dude, you know, he's like an average thought. Like, no, I want to be excellent at whatever it is I devote my life. If it's part of my life, I want to be excellent. Mm -hmm. I want my health to be top. I want to be stronger than I was when I was playing. I want to be having great faith. I want my relationships to be great. And Obviously, it's hard to be great at all things at right? the same time, at the same time. Yeah. But to me, like when we talk about this concept of being locked in, I mean, you are going to spend time with your family and you have a choice on whether or not you're going to be intentional or you're going to be not present. But you just said that you have a choice. Yeah. All right. A choice requires dedication. It requires sacrifice. It requires you to be, it requires you to be all, uh, all in. People don't make, people don't make a choice. They make choices. Mm. So, you know, in this society now we have the ability, there, there's so many, there's so many more options. There's so many more options. There's so many things for distractions. We have so many things. You have, you have so much unnecessary things in your life that it literally is consuming your life when you can't be intentional and you can't be focused on the things that mat at things that matter the most. Obviously I, you know, I know how important your business is to you. I know how impo important being a mentor to individuals are being, you know, your faith, your, you know, to your family, to a a a everything. And there, there is a time and place for all those things. They just can't at many times you can't be at the level of greatness with those things all the time. Mm -hmm. You could be, listen, you could have that, you could have an unbelievable day at work. You know, just you, listen, I that, that work week was just, it was out of the park. You know what? It may not be that week, what your level of standards of being a great father may not be, may not equate to what you felt like that, that yeah, time. Just, yeah. But that doesn't make you not a great father. Mm -hmm. Just your, well, you talked about standard. You may have, may have not met your standard on that particular thing. And people try, what they're trying to, what people try to do is when they try to be great in all those things, they actually end up being average. Mm. What because I, that's where burnout comes in. Yeah. When you're trying to do all these, all these, all these different things all the time. You're trying to spend time with your kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the phone's going off. You got something going on and you got to, you know, you've been working on this deal for yeah. two years. All of a sudden it comes in. You're like, <laughs> I got a choice. Yeah. yeah I, I got, I got, I got, I got, I got to, yeah. I got to make a choice. And now you're like, okay, well, I'm not going to answer. I'm not going to answer the phone while you work. You spent two years working on this deal and here it is. And they need an answer. They need an answer right now. And you look over here and you look over here. Oh. Yeah. What I've come to believe, I agree with you. If you try to, let's just say you're not great at anything yet and you're trying to be great. Like it's impossible to be great at pursuing all things at once, right? I found that I've developed skills as I've tried to, you know, become great at them one at a time. Now it doesn't mean like nothing, you know, everything else in my life stops. That's not what happens, no. right? But it's like to be truly focused on learning one new thing and becoming great at it does take intention and focus and everything on that one thing. And like I look back at my life, I'm like, OK, I pursued baseball as a single dude for a long time. Yeah. That was all I focused on. Then I got married young and I focused on becoming a great husband. Didn't have kids, didn't have a business or any of this stuff. We were broke. Mm -hmm. Twelve hundred bucks a month. Um, then we had kids and I had a successful. Well, then. I built my business and that was all. I was like, yo, 
at that point, like I had built the skill to be a good husband. Like it doesn't leave me. Like I spent years building that and building a new standard that like I hold myself to. Well, see, now going back to going back to being able to do all those things. And I think this is very important and I'll let you, uh, I'll let you get back to your point. Playing a team sport mm -hmm. teaches you those things. Mm. Play, and, and that's why for me, competition with the youth and getting them involved in activities where they have to c compete teaches you how to be, how to do all those things. Okay. You have to, how can you be a great father? How can you be a great, uh, a great husband if you were, if you were a sucky teammate? Yeah. So if you, if you were, if you were a terrible teammate, guess what? The chances of you being an awesome in your relationship, having a great, yeah. I'm not saying it's not going to happen, but you know, you it's start. It's a new skill to learn. Yeah. You, don't, you don't know how. Right. So, yeah. you know, if you, people get a better understanding of that early, that earlier say, Hey, listen, as much as you think that this is all that matters right now, but there, there's a game inside a game. Yeah. There's a life game going inside everything, that, everything that you do is preparing you for something that's farther down, that's farther down, the, farther down the line. Yeah. And that's why you have to be all in on those partic all particular things. Yeah, no, 100% agree. And that's why I'm like, as I'm articulating, okay, from the moment I was 21 and, and, and getting drafted to now I'm 34. And I think about, okay, what did I spend years developing skills in? And you're like, okay, I developed the skill as a husband. Now, I could just keep trying to build that skill or I could say, hey, this is like a really good standard for me. I don't necessarily need to practice at it that much anymore. It's not like it's normal now. And I can go now try and be great at this other thing. Cause you got to the don't think stage on there. Exactly. It's a habit. Yes. It's just like baseball, right? Like I can go throw and hit right now. I don't, I haven't practiced in years. Right. And you know, then you get kids and you're like, all right, I'm going to go and focus on being a great father. Okay. Business. It's like, dude, if you never succeed in business, you better be all in on figuring out how to do business. Well now, yeah, I could, I could film and do business in my sleep. Like, I didn't prep for this podcast. I've just filmed for thousands and thousands of mm -hmm. hours. I don't need to like keep practicing. Now, if I want to be the best podcast host ever like Joe Rogan, then sure, that's a different level of sure. commitment. Right. But I've reached my standard of like, no, I'm good enough. Like, let me focus on other things in my life that I want to get better at. And so I think people miss this and that how could you have so many skills and talents and like, like how did these guys, how did Kobe learn to go and do film and all this stuff? Well, he focused only on that once he went all in. Like, it. it's not like he learned it while he was trying to be a great basketball mm -hmm. player. You know, he was aware of it probably, but it was like, all right, I'm on to the next phase. I'm all in. That's it. Yeah. So you're always all in. You're it's always, just, people, yeah. here's the thing. People don't know what the definition of all in is. Yeah. They don't know what the definition of all in is. All right. They just, they, they I, oh, I beat the sun up. <laughs> okay. I, I worked, I worked hard. Okay. Do do? I stayed up late. All right. I, I got to the point where like, when did sleep deprivation become a, become a key thing to success? I've never understood. I've never understood that. Everybody tells you how important it is to rest and recover and so forth. And they, they think if you constantly work, like you said earlier, if you're constantly working 18 hours, 18, are you, are you really performing? Are you really performing at your best? Are you, are, are you really, are you really, did, really did Kobe, all in? I'm a Lakers fan. Did Kobe really not sleep? Like, no, you know, listen, he took, there's the rumors. He's like he, sleep three hours or four yeah, hours. No, night. Kobe took naps. Kobe okay. took, Kobe took naps. There were nights that listen, he, he didn't, he didn't sleep. All right. There were, you know, he would watch, he would watch obsess over film and so forth, but you can't function at that level for that long of a time where you're, you're sleep depriving yourself. There are moments we've all had to do it. Yeah. But it's not well, normal. It's just not, it's not, it may, but people only take that one story and make it as part of a whole person's, whole person's career. Yeah. And, and, and Kobe and probably like liked that. that people thought that. Yeah. <laughs> he's just, you know, he's just like, you know, he goes, all right, then they go, right, well, you know, if he's only sleeping three hours and I should only, <laughs> I should be only, but what works for one person doesn't work for the other. Yeah. It, it just doesn't. Yeah. That's why I said, you got to find, you got to find what's, what's, you got to put your ingredients together. You got to put your recipe together to see, Hey, this is what, this is, this is what success is going to, is going to work for me. Just like from a nutrition, nutritional standpoint. Go. Well, Every diet book out there works. Every nutrition plan out there works. 
if you do it. But you got to find the one that the one that you're gonna that's gonna work for, that's gonna work for you. Mm. That is going to work for you. That's, there's a winning plan out there that you have to design. You have to take you have to take something from this individual, something from this individual, something from this individual, all this, and then mix it up into your recipe and say, hey, these this is how this is my formula of winning. Not take Ryan Pineda's formula and try to throw it in with Tim Grover's and try to throw it in with Joe Rogan's right. and then try to throw it in with this person and this person and this person. It, it, it doesn't work. It's like individuals that claim to be experts at everything. They yeah. claim to be experts at relationships and, uh, and making money and entrepreneurs and sales and all this other stuff. I was like, you can't. Yeah. You just can't. You can be knowledgeable in those things, yeah. but you can't be an expert in all those things. Yeah, you could be above average. Yeah. Yeah. I've been thinking about a concept a lot as we're talking, and it's kind of the concept of having urgency, which I know you've talked about in the books, um, but also understanding it's the long game. Like it's it's just repeating the same things over and over day in and day out and, you know, not letting one bad day turn into two or three or four. Because that's what people do. They're just like, oh, I had a bad day. Forget it. And then it just becomes the routine. And like I've just seen it time and time again of like a skill takes a long time to develop and there's just no way to really <laughs> fast track it. Well, here's the thing. Every, everybody in this room has a routine. Yeah. Everyone has a routine. But what happens is routines create comfort. Mm -hmm. They create comfort. All right. There's a routine out of boredom that creates comfort. Mm. And people... And a lot of people get stuck in that routine where they just do the same thing over and over and over. There's no challenge in that. There's no challenge in that routine. There's no joy. There's no excitement. It's just comfortable for them. This is what I do. This is how I do it. And we just continue to go over and over and over again. Then there's a routine out of skill that also creates comfort. All right. That's the that's the one where you do what you just said. All right. It's the one taking a thousand bad it's swings. So you don't have to think about it when you're at, when you're at that plate. It's taking those thousand, it's about taking those thousand shots. It's about being consistent in those things over and over again, but challenging yourselves where it's a skill set. It's no longer just it's creating comfort from a skill set that you do over and over and over again. Just like you said. When I sit down, I don't have to prepare for these podcasts anymore. I do a little research on my client, who I'm talking to, so forth. I'm re I'm re I'm mm -hmm. ready to go. Yeah, I'm re I'm ready to go. Yeah. So that's a routine from skill, something that you've done over and over and over again, and you challenge challenge yourself. Otherwise, you can come in and you can ask the same individuals five questions. That's a routine out of that's a routine out of boredom. Mm. So which routine? Which routine are you actually falling into every single every single morning? Mm. Does you, is your routine actually like here? Yeah, it, you know what? It's create it's challenging me. It's create it's creating a skill. It's make it's making me uncomfortable so I can be comfortable during the when those mo when those moments need for need need for me to be that way. How much does gaining perspective come into play? Because one thing I've realized is as I've hired more and more people. Let's just take sales, for example. Most of them have no perspective of like what it takes to be a truly great salesperson. How many dials, how much practice, how much training. Um, you know, they might come from a spot where, dude, they're the only one they know making a hundred grand. Like they think they're killing it. Yeah. And my perspective is, no, nah, dude, I've seen the best of the best. Like this ain't nothing, right? And I guess it's just different levels of standards. But I think about it because I'm like, man, I'm so grateful that I have perspective of what it takes to be really great at something, but also to have perspective of being around the highest level people in the world, performers. And you're like, wow, you know, how do you gain perspective to know where you truly stand? Well, you gain perspective by, listen, by shutting your mouth and watching <laughs> and yeah. literally wa watching them, but watching them perform at the, at watching them do things over and over again and just, and, and be willing to like open your eyes up and, and just 
see what see what they're see what they're doing see how their body language is see the words that they see the words that they lose uh use how they sh- how they sh- how they show up all those things if you just like and and don't be distracted we're so easily distracted now because you know everything's everything's so easily available to us even when you can tell if you want to really gain perspective you have to be like when that person is communicating with you, you can tell if that person is all, it person is all in or not. Whether you're giving them that the information or information or not, and it's different for it's different for each individual. You know, for some people, like you just said, hey, listen, a hundred grand may be it, it, it may be everything for them. Yeah. And then you, as a boss, are you willing to say, you know what, this person has a skill set that I know. It's consistent, and I see the perspective of keeping them right where right where they're at because they're going to do. Those are the, the yeah. those are the individuals. When in the first book, Relentless, I talk about is the, is the cooler. Yeah. You give them a job. You listen. Say, hey, listen. I need you to make fifty calls today. Yeah, they're going to make exactly <laughs> fifty. They're not going to make fifty one. They're not going to make forty nine. Yeah, they're going to make fifty. They're going to make fifty calls. They're good enough. They're, yeah, I, I call them the B players. Yeah, and you said, listen. Yeah, they're like, I, I want to. And you see something in them, say, oh, God, you made a hundred grand this year. You know, if you were to do this, and, like, and then when you put that pressure on them, or you put that expo, or you put a different perspective on them, their work ethic starts to suffer. Yes. I've had that happen. It, 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 it work actually gets work. You know, the first book, you know, from good, to, relentless, from good to great to unstoppable. I said, here's the thing. You know what people are, their perspectives are and what people are great at? They're great from going good to great to unstoppable and making things worse. <laughs> <laughs> and making, and actually making things worse. Yeah. Because as they progress from good to great to unstoppable, they're like they see the pressure that comes with that comes with those things, and they're like, "Yeah, I'm 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 good at I'm good at being good. Uh, this is this is this is this is my level." And they may be great in something else. I just have like as as I just progress through life, and I'm not even close to like progressing through a ton of stuff. But I, you know, as I think about these high performers, and I just see the similarity, I'm like. I see why Jordan got so mad at his teammates all the time. Like they just don't get it. They don't have his, his perspective. And I'm, you know, it's like, and there's no way for them to get it. They just don't get it. There's nothing you can do to, to do it. You could just, you know, you just set the example every single day where the thing is you can't come down to their level, right? What you try to do is you try to get them to elevate as close to your level as you can. Mm -hmm. If there's a little bit of improvement in there, you're like, Hey, I've done, I've done, I've done something with that individual. But within that time, even MJ, he passed the ball. Let John Paxson take the shot. He yeah. let Steve Kerr take the shot. He, you know, he let these individuals help him out. But that was earned during the practices over and over and o- and over again. You don't have to be the best player to be the most accountable in the pressure si- in the pressure situations. You just got to have the respect yeah. of the leader, and, and you have to and you have to earn that respect. People always say, "Well, you got to respect me." Well, you no, give me something to respect. <laughs> yeah. I will. Res- I will respect you. Yeah, and respect is so much more difficult now because it, it, it's so easy to be something you're not. How much do you think having, you know, you, you went from Jordan and training him for many many years to then you transition to Kobe, and obviously you're a much wiser. You have way more perspective at this point, having made all the mistakes with Jordan. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, Kobe, you know, you you go into it with this whole new perspective. And like, I was actually, I mean, I I know you were on The Last Dance, but I really liked that documentary. I think it was Redeem. Redeem, sure. Yeah, I I didn't realize that Kobe was such a big deal in that of like coming in to like (laughs) whip those guys into shape. Yeah. And just coming in from his perspective of like, dude, you guys have never won anything. You don't even know what hard work is. You guys yeah. are going to the club and all this crap. Like, this is what it looks like. Well, we were the ones that started the four thirty workout, the five a.m. All this other stuff where the other players started to join. We did the we did the bike. We did that massive bike ride in the in the sun when you know where it was, yeah. it was, he goes. I want to go out where it's the hottest because you know his perspective of winning because he won over and over again. 
is completely different than somebody else's. But then now they st- other people start to see what he's doing. They start to, and they're like, okay, if we don't level up now, we may not get to, we're not going to get, we're not going to get to two fours level, but he's telling us we can all do a hell of a lot better because if we don't, he's going to, he's literally going, Kobe will literally, you know, one of the greatest things they always said, he goes, when I go out and play, my job was for you to make you consider your life choice. I want you to change your decision. You made the wrong choice being a professional basketball player. Yeah. I literally, I, and he did that to his own teammates in practice every single day, but you have to earn the right to be able to do that. People want to treat, people want to put this pressure on their employees. People want to do without having the results to, yeah. s- to be able to speak to them in yeah, that you, way. And not every, you gotta earn it. You have a track record. And not everybody can speak to individuals that that way. Not yeah. everybody can speak the language uh, Ryan speaks. Not everybody can speak the language Grover speaks. It's di- it's di- it's different. You have to earn. But I rather have. I rather be authentic in the way I communicate to an individual than to be a fraud. Yeah, I don't know how to communicate in like a. I guess, trying to make people feel good manner. Like I'm going to communicate in a very direct and some people will be inspired and motivated, but you're, you know, you're going to get the facts. You're going to get the truth. And there's nothing more inspiring than the truth. Yeah. There's nothing more encouraging than the truth. Like I'm not going to sugarcoat it. This is where we are guys. This situation sucks. <laughs> this is where we need to get. It yeah. ain't going to be easy. Right. But this is what it is. Yeah. Let's roll. Right. You know, throw, you went, you entered a very, risky space of throwing events. Yeah, it is. Ve- risky it's, space. Ve- it's a very, it's a very, very risky pay. And you just like, you know, you didn't do one, you don't, you know, you've, you've stacked You've stacked some along, along the way and you can, and you continue to do it on like a quarterly basis or wh- whatever you're doing. And with each event, everyone else has got to level up. And if they're not leveling up, say, listen, this, might, this is not the place for you. And that's all right. Yeah. That's and we've lost people along the oh, way wait, yes. because they can't, they don't want to, or right. they, you know, whatever. No, no problem. Yeah. I, 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 I don't have an issue. I don't have an issue with that. One of our, you know, it's funny, one of our students, and by the way, guys, Tim is going to be speaking at WealthCon. So wealthcon.org is going to be an epic event. Once again, we're trying to level up. It should be our biggest and best ever. We're going for 2000 attendees at Caesars, which nobody really does like every 90 days to just do it that frequently with no marketing, you know, like it's just boom blitz. But, uh, he goes, Hey, it's crazy. Like, I am just shocked that every time I come to one, it's better. You've increased, you got better in some aspect, whether it was the registration, whether it's the, you know, the, the transitions from speaker to like the little details. And I was like, well, literally after every event, I'll write down 30 things that I'm like, yo, I did not like that little thing. I didn't, I thought that video was too long. I thought that the seating could have been arranged a little better. I thought that maybe we were a little late after lunch and you know, the little tiny details. And then I started to think, well, the only reason I can know this stuff is because we do it so frequently at such a high level, you know, everyone else might be lucky to run one event a year. Yeah. And so to run four at that level and to do that for the last, you know, three years straight, You just start to think like, dang, dude, I probably know more about events than almost anyone just because the repetitions. Well, people don't want to pay attention to the details anymore. How many times have you got, don't sweat the small stuff? No, no. The maniacal ones sweat everything. Yeah. Every little detail matters. Mm -hmm. Everything matters. You look at the best of the best. You don't think so. You know, the Super Bowl is going to be here in a- Next week. You know- uh, I think it's a couple of weeks. Well, whatever well, maybe, it is, next yeah. week, whatever, whatever it is. You don't think so? The two teams, they're, 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 they're paying attention to all the details. They, even the teams, we're not staying at the strip. This is where we're <laughs> going to see. This is where the practice facility will be. This is what's going to happen. You have to pay attention. The one detail you skip may cost you. Hmm. And the detail, that you, like the other people, people come in, man, your speakers are awesome. This is thing. And somebody might say, you know what? The registration was poor and that totally turned them off from everything else. Their initial, yeah. ex- it's like when you walk into a restaurant, the person that greets you at the restaurant, well, if that person's got a bad attitude, then you you already have, you know, ah, this food's going to be, uh, so it's not, it's not going to be a, 
the person is like every little detail matters. Every every little detail matters. It it re- it really really. And I paid attention to I paid attention to details that other people just just thought were just irrelevant. Yeah, that were just irrelevant. Well, when you come from the world where literally everything is a millimeter or a split second between the difference of success and failure, yeah. you realize how important footwork is, timing, all of those things. Well, throwing a event is no different than a dance. Yeah. Yeah. All right. It's no different. It's no different than knowing the proper, knowing the proper footwork. Yeah. Yeah. No. The sequence. Okay. What speakers going here after this person and that? And- yes. The, the different lighting, make sure everybody's on pay. Hey, register. Make sure you're in your seats on time. This is what's going to yeah. happen. This is what time the door is going to open and so forth. And then, you know, then you get to see, then you put your staff and your individuals with each event that you've done and everything you do, you get to see how they perform under pressure. Yeah. Because with each event, there's a little bit more pressure. There's day. a little bit more pressure. There's a little bit more, there's a little bit more, but here's the thing. If you don't come in, and treat every day as game day, you'll yeah. never be ready for game day. Yeah. You'll be never, you know, when the most intentional individuals, every practice, Michael always said, I practice so hard so the games are easy. Mm. I practice so hard so the games are easy. So when you come in here, this is your practice stage. Yeah. So when you're communicating to individuals on the phone and you're, tr- you know, you're, 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 you're selling them a ticket, you're telling them how beneficial this event, you, that's game day. Yeah. That's, that's game. So then when you show up at the event, the event is going to be easy. Yes. It, it's going, it's all the going hard work's done. It, it's, it, it's done. You just have to make sure all the pieces, are going to fit, are going to fit and everything's going to, everything's going to flow correct. And that way, if you've done your job, if you've done so many game days, then when something is thrown at you that you didn't expect a game day, you not handle it. You You already can handle it because you already took, you've already put in the practice time. You've already put in the, you've already put in the hours or you've already experienced that that audible before yeah, and you're you like, know, oh, okay, this yeah, is what we do. Not, not, not a problem. We're, we, yeah. we, we got, we got this, yeah. but those are your pressure people. And they don't, you know, I would say pressure, pressure is a privilege. Pressure, <laughs> pressure defines who we are and who we are not, but also defines who we can become. Yeah. So when you tell individuals, Hey, I want 2000 people at this event. I want 2000 people at this event. Well, guess what? That's telling you the people that are responsible for getting those people in the seats, yeah, it's going to tell you who they are and who they're not. It's a lot of pressure, and what they, and what they can what they can become. But you know what? Yeah, you know, pressure is that means you believe in them. Do you believe in yourself? Mm-hmm. Do you believe in yourself? You know, it's funny. You're sitting in Vegas here, and where <laughs> before all the other before all the other places were allowing gambling, this was the only place that uh, that you could you could gamble in. Well, it's funny. People will put a bet on somebody else to deliver them an outcome, but they won't bet on themselves anymore. Yeah. But that's what pressure is. Or lazy. You know? You know, people will be like, ah, oh, you just do it for me. I'll pay more versus, yeah. you know, them doing it themselves. But I, I, you know, I got a question now because you've been through a lot now. How old are you now? I'm 59. 59. Um, and so I guess as you get older, you just keep getting more and more perspective. And you get to see now with hindsight how things played out. And so I'm curious if from your perspective, okay, a guy like MJ, obviously the GOAT, and this dude accomplished everything you could imagine on the court with brand, with, you know, he just flipped his NBA team, made a boatload of money. This dude has had tons of business and fame success. And then like kind of when I look at him now, I'm like, ah, I don't, I wonder if it was actually worth it because, you know, I I see him, you know, he golfs a lot and he's competing in that way. And I don't know him, you know, him way better than me. So this is just my uninformed uh, perception of what it looks like. And I'm like, man, he doesn't look like his health is that great. You know, just looking at things. And I know guys who have golfed with him. I'm like, man, he seems like he's drinking a lot. He seems like, you know, I know he went through a divorce and Mm -hmm. I'm like, these were all the cost of achieving all that he achieved. And I'm like, was it worth it now that you have hindsight and age to, to I can't, I can't speak on it. I can't speak on that. Only, only he can. 
Yeah. He's the only individual that 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 can that can speak on because his definition of winning may be completely different and his high side of success may be completely different than anybody else. You tell people in the world that hey, listen, you can literally own your own 18 hole golf course. Like mm-hmm. not a little putt but your own where they play the tours and they do all that all that other stuff. What would you Yeah. You're like this is awesome. Yeah, they'd be like, yeah, yeah. Like, Man, this I'm a golfer, so okay, I love it. Like literally, you can go play anytime you want, and it's just like one of the best golf courses that you've ever played in. I got friends who are members. Yeah, yeah. All right, and you so obviously you know what the co- you know what the cost is yep. to be a part to be a part of that, and you talk about man, I get to own a basketball. I get and be like, it, it, it's it's yeah. different for it's different for each it's different for each each individual. There's going, there's going to be a price. A price is going to be need to be paid. What area that that's up to you, but I, you know, like it just, I, in, it just seems to me like the price always ends up getting paid down the road. It does for something, right? Whether it's like, you realize like, huh? Okay. You know, I made my decision and now I fully get to see the price because yes. you don't see it when it happened. You're like, oh bro, we just did it. This yeah. is great. You know? Yeah. And and people notice it with health more than anything, right? Because dude, when you're young, we can eat what we want, we can get away with so much, and then later on in life, you're like, wow, that that finally it's going to catch. catch it's going to get well. Listen, for people that work out, <laughs> I say you pay the price if you don't work out, and then you pay the price when you work out. Because if you constantly work out later on in life, shoulders, knees, something's always going to be something's always going to be a little bit out of out of whack. It it, it just is, but no matter what that price is, I always say this. If you think the price of winning is too high, wait till you get the bill for regret. Mm. Okay. And that bill is generational. That bill is generational. And a lot of individuals are passing that bill on from one generation to the next, to the next, to the next. There may be some individuals in this building where that bill was passed on to them. Yeah. There's a quote from MJ that I always use in my oh. presentations. I don't know if I'll have time to pull it up, but essentially it, it, it's that concept of he's like, I can accept trying and failing. What I cannot accept is just not trying at all and, and just living with the regret of yes, not knowing. Exactly. Yeah. You know, so it's just that's what I just said. I mean, so there's going to you're going to pay you're going to you're going to pay the price. I'd rather pay the price of this and then I regret, you know what, man, I should have done this. I could have I could have done I could have done that. You How does somebody get over that? I mean, it's just strictly you, fear. Yeah. Well, it, it's to me, it's it, it's more, it, it's a lot of that. See, fear and pressure go together. Okay. All right. I I I I, I said if you're put into a if you if you're put f- pressure is telling you you need to face this fear and, and and do it. You need to be able to take this last shot. You need to get be. You need to make those extra phone calls. You need to do these things. Doubt is something we create. You don't, you never get, you never get over doubt because doubt is something, fear to me is an instinct. Doubt is something that's manifested that you, that you create yourself. You you know, if you could be sitting here, you could be like, man, you know, I could have been a really, really good podcaster. Mm. I could have been really, really good at throwing events. You know, so you, but you're like, yeah, you know what? You kept doubting yourself. I'm not going to do this. I'm not, I'm not going to do, I'm not going to do this. And then later on, you're just like, and I should have done this. I should have done this. I should have done this. so. Now, you look at somebody's physical health. Well, how detrimental is that to a person's mental health? Mm. Carrying that weight around with yourself, your whole the rest of your life also. Mm. Right? Yeah. There's there's you know there's the weight of not being healthy physically, but that mental weight can be you know. I use this. I use this example. You know, if you carry a, you you wear a backpack, all right, and a backpack weighs five pounds. Yeah, and it's eight o'clock in the morning, and you never take that backpack off. In a week, it's no longer the same weight. It's heavier. In a month, it's heavier. In a year, it's heavier. How much baggage are you carrying from regret throughout the years yeah. that just weigh you down, weigh you down, weigh you down, and that you can't, you just, you, you basically, you give up. Mm. You give up because that mental weight is just so, so strong. I'm a big, I, I, I'm a big person that believes in deleting. D- 
deleting the unessentials. You know, everybody wants to add, add. They want to add more that they want to add more value. They want to add more money. They want to add more happiness. They want to add all these things. But what it, what it, what, what are your unessentials that you, that no longer serves you now? It could be people. It could be thoughts. It could be emotions that no longer serve you that you need, that you need to delete. Just because you grew up with somebody, you can still maintain a friendship with that, that individual, but you may have outgrown that individual. Yeah. Yep. All right. That doesn't mean you don't care for or them. Or a partner or an yeah, employee. It, it could be, it could be whatever. Yeah. You know, it, and that's why it's important that the person you align yourself with is that individual that, you know, that can be selfish for you. I said, because it, it, in order to be successful in those things, in order to be the, the successful, to be a successful parent, to be a successful father, to be a successful business person, to be a successful husband, you have to have, if you can find one individual that is literally selfish for you. Yeah. And that's so diff that's so difficult to do because it's easy to be selfish for ourselves. But when is that time where I say, hey, listen, you know what? Right now, I need to let so and so focus in on this. I am going to be selfish for that person. I'm going to carry the rest of the I'm going to carry the rest of the rate because I know when they win, we're gonna we're gonna win and we're all gonna benefit. We're all gonna be happy. we're all gonna be we're all gonna be happy. We're all gonna be happy. We're all gonna be more joyful. When, when, when this thing, when this thing comes and that individual is very, very, very difficult to find, yeah. very difficult to find. I remember you talking about selfishness being a good thing in the book yeah. and you know, the way you explained it of like, Hey, you gotta want to be great, you know, like get those people out of your life, like be selfish about that. And I think hundred percent agree. You're yeah. big, you know, obviously you're huge into your faith, Yep. you know, massively and it's how can you take, you want to impact so many different individuals in so many different ways, just not from a business standpoint, from a faith standpoint, relationship standpoint, all these different, th all these different things that you're doing. Well, how can you accomplish those things if you're not selfish for yourself first? Yeah. How can you give more to other individuals if you're not taking care of yourself? Mm-hmm. And as people, the individuals that call you selfish, the only time they call you selfish, you could do a hundred things for those individuals. And you've said yes every single time. <laughs> the one time you say no, you're selfish. I know. All I right? see this so many yeah. I'm laughing because I just seen it so many times. Yeah. You do one thing somebody doesn't like, and then boom. Your, the whole perspective <laughs> of you uh, of you of you of you changes. Yeah, people yeah. are crazy. Man. It's it's un, it's, un, it's, it's un, crazy yeah. that like to not look at track record and just be like, oh, yep. But the last thing, That's not a it. fan. Not a fan. It's yeah. crazy that the world's like that. It's. I got so. I got one last question mm -hmm. as we're coming up on time. Um, you know, you brought up faith, and you know when you were talking about in relentless the darkness, this is something that I at first struggled with as a Christian because. Obviously, we're called to be light in the world, you know, not to embrace demons and, and all these sure. things. And on the other hand, as an athlete and as a competitor, uh, I know exactly what you're talking about. I may not call it the darkness, but I'm like, oh, bro, like, I want to go stomp someone's throat. And like, you I'm, said it at the beginning of the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. I, right. I'm coming for blood. Like, yeah. I'm come. There's one winner. There's one loser. And I'm all for like, cause this entrepreneur world's all about like collaboration and like, mm -hmm. you do need people to be successful. Sure. Like we can all win together as a team, but at the same time, there's many times where, Hey, there's only one and I got to go do it. Yep. Well, so, okay. So let's look at this and this is, I'm not, I'm not going to get into faith as, as you would, cause you're yeah. much more adverse in it than I am. But the, my knowledge that I know of in the book, what's the passage? Let there be light, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Genesis. Okay. In order to be their light, what was first? Darkness. Yeah. You need one with the other. All right. Yeah. When does a name, I, I ask this question all the time. When does a new day start? Once the light comes back. Okay. I, I say the new day starts at midnight. Well, yeah, true. Is it, is it, is it dark or light at midnight? Dark. 
If a new day starts in the dark, where does your new beginning start? The dark. And people look at it when they talk, when I talk about the darkness and the dark, they're looking at it completely the wrong. They're thinking of it as vampires and werewolves <laughs> and, all, and, 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 and it's not, we all have demons. Yeah. We all, we all have demons. All yeah. right. And I'm a firm believer demons exist. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I know that because I've seen, I, I've yeah. just, you know, I've, I've heard, I've seen some, but yeah. I always say, you know what? Acknowledge your demons. Yeah. Figure out how to use them. Make them your allies. They're a part. They're not going anywhere. Mm. They are not going anywhere. Mm. They're not, you can't, you can't make them, you can't make them disappear. All right, they're part of who they're a part of who you are. If a demon puts you in a bad place, a demon might be the only person that can get you out of there until you can ha until the, you can be handed off to some somebody somebody else. Mm. Embra embrace their their part of you. They're part of what allows you to be who you are. If there's dark, there's light. If there's happiness, there there's sadness. There are all these, there are all these di different, different, th different things. And people don't want to, people don't want to acknowledge it because then you carry that weight around with you. You know, when you open up a lot of individuals, you've put the best part of you, you've shoved it into a closet. You've literally shoved it into a closet. Then when you have to compete at the level that you have to compete at, mm -hmm. you know, what do, what do they always say? Man, they're a beast. They're a demon. They're a giant. Yeah. Well, you know, if you look at history, those are all, those are all supposedly bad things, mm -hmm. but that's who we acknowledge our most fiercest competitors, the people that win over and over again. And that person's a beast. Man, they're, they're, a, they're, they're a demon. There's something, di there's something different about that, different about that individual. And I'll test you even, I'll test you even further to go about, about your fate. Everybody read the first book. Everybody wants to read the second book. Read the first book about God. You are you talking the Old Testament? Okay. Read the Old Testament. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and before you read the New Testament, read the old I, I've read the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. All right. Then come back to me and talk to me. Yeah. About Oh yeah, there's yeah. A, there's a lot of demons, there's giants, there's you know beasts, there's there's a lot of things in the Old Testament that, um, one thousand percent, uh, I believe have have been on this earth, and some are still on this earth, and, um, you know, when the, I guess the way I think about demons to give the other perspective is, and and my own darkness as we're talking about it is, you know, I'm not think I wouldn't call them demons because I'm like. I don't want demons around. Sure, me, sure. Right? Yeah, I get it. From the spiritual side. Yeah. But as far as like my, let's just say the chip on my shoulder, all the slights people have made about me, all the the talk and, mm -hmm. you know, people saying you can't do it, all of those things, like you tuck them away and you're like, all right, all right. That's what you're saying. Okay. Oh, this guy. Okay. that That's the guy. Okay. And you you, you just, it, going back to the Old Testament, you see these things, right? You, you, you see the story of David looking at Goliath and he's like, this is the guy that you guys are all scared of. Yeah. Why you going to let him talk crap this whole time about you guys and mm -hmm. nobody's going to do nothing about it. I'll do it. Yeah. You know? And so I think it comes from, I just don't forget, you know, like I, I hear it. I don't acknowledge it. I don't let it make me mad or make me insecure or make me um, offended. Right. It's like it, fires me up well there's a different i would say you know what the best the best of the best do they don't think about it but they never forget yes because if you can't if you're constantly thinking about it they won yeah they won because that now if you're in the real estate business yeah you know the old adage they say the most valuable real estate is in between you know right in between here so if somebody's got you thinking about things all the time they own some real estate yeah, up yeah. in there but you can't forget Mm -hmm. You can't forget there's a huge difference, you know? Yeah, no. And that hundred percent doing, doing laps in your mind that they're, they're winning. So yeah, no, I don't, I'm not worried about that. I just do want people to know because there is just like, I, and I would say this, there's, there's so many soft Christians because they, they see it as this way of like, oh, well, you know, it's like, no, dude, David, all these leaders in the old Testament, like you're talking, these dudes were fierce warriors killing people 
dominating, getting after it. Right. Yeah. And that's, how I look at it. I'm like, yo, I'm a competitor. God put me on the surf for a reason. You can't be faithful. You can't have faith when it's convenient. You can't <laughs> have win. You can't have winning when it's convenient. You can't have, you know, the, the only thing you can, the only thing that's convenient is losing. <laughs> losing is losing is convenient. That's Comfortable yeah. for most. Losing is it's very convenient to be to to lose. That that's that's easy because that's where all there's a bunch of people there that will comfort you that will make ex, that will make excuses for that will make excuses for you because they didn't they didn't win they didn't win any they've never won anything or they they quit they quit giving their they quit quit giving their efforts into into what they're doing. I have no problem like listen. I have no problem with individuals. I hate it when they say I tried my best. Yeah. That just did you try your best or did you do your best? There's a huge difference between the two. If you did your best, I got no problem with you with you failing. But try gives try is convenience. It's a convenience. Just saying when you try when you tried your best. Losers try your best. Winners, if you constantly do your best, are you going to win all the time? Absolutely not. Kobe played for 20 years. He won five championships. That means 15 years he did not win the championship. Between championship number three and number four, it was seven years in between. Mm. Seven years. And you got individuals. So something that he already won three times, that he already won three times and nobody would have said anything different about him if he would won three or five. But for seven years again, he chased something that he had already captured three times. We got individuals that can't stay focused for seven minutes. <laughs> why? Why um, are they so soft? That's my my question. Like, wh why are people, you said coolers and cleaner, like, why is the majority of the world, if, if they're good, a cooler, and then everyone else a loser, and there's very few cleaners that just are you do you have to be born a cleaner no no see that's why that that's where i disagree i said hey, this is here's the thing how old are your kids uh um, i have three kids under five you have three kids under. what's your youngest five months five months yeah as a five month old cried yeah he cries he cries yep when was the last time you know anybody who did something to that intensity level because when a baby cries, it cr it's all in. There's nothing. It is going to cry, cry, cry. The intensity level that that baby brings into that crying, that's not taught. Yeah. You're, you, you listen, you're born relentless. You're taught to relent. Mm. You're born relentless. You're taught to relent. You have, <laughs> when you have, when you have the kids, you know, when they were, when, you have a five month. How old is your second? Th three and five. Okay, so yeah. three and five. When you're three, you know you go through the you go through the two year olds, and even at three, you try to try to negotiate with a two year old and see what happens. <laughs> it's not great, right? It's not it, it, right. It's not They're better it's, salespeople than my guys, right? It, it's 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 <laughs> not it's not going to be great. So here's the thing: you go in there, you we can't wait for our kids to walk. We literally can't wait for them to walk. All right. Then the next milestone is we can't wait for them to say their first words. Then we spend the majority of our lives after that telling them to shut up and sit down. Right. Yeah. I want my two-year-old to be a two-year-old. I want my five-year-old to be a five-year-old. All right. I want them to learn and be taught good behavior, but not to the point where it takes the relentless competitive drive out of those individuals. Mm. Let them let them be. I go to airports, you know, I travel quite a bit. I see kids, I see kids doing kids things. And the minute when they're by themselves, they'll be doing things. The minute somebody looks, the, the parent will come over, oh, stop doing that. Why? Yeah. Why? You know, he's not, he's not, he or she's not hurting anybody. They're not setting a person next to him on fire. They're exploring their creativity. They're exploring their relentlessness. They're exploring, explore, they're exploring their drive. They're, 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 they're learning. So we're, none of us are born that way. But what happens is somewhere through, somewhere through life, there's a moment in everybody's life. 
And for some individuals, it happens young. Some may, it may happen later. And how you handle that situation pretty much determines everything. Mm. Did you run from it, or did you, or did you, did you face it? Like every, every and, and and I'll leave after I'll leave you after this point with every fairy tale, every single fairy tale. A fairy tale has two things in common. There's a dark forest and a dark moment. How you handle that dark forest, how you handle that dark moment determines everything. Mm. Everything. Mm. And you want to know the people that go from good to great to unstoppable? They didn't run from that dark moment. They don't think about that dark moment as they get older, but they never forget. Mm -hmm. And when you never forget, that internal fire never goes out. Mm. It never, never goes out. Mm. I love it. Well, Tim, I appreciate you coming out to Vegas, Thank you. man. I appreciate you coming to speak at WealthCon and light the world on fire. Oh, listen, if you, if you haven't heard me, if you, and here's the thing, everything that you've heard on this podcast, when I speak at this event, it'll be completely different. Mm. So don't think you'll just get a repetitive thing of what's <laughs> going on here. Yep. I love it. Yeah. First thing Tim said to me was, Hey, we don't need to talk about MJ and all these guys like, and repeat all that. Like let's, let's give them something fresh yeah. and we're always going to keep it fresh. So um, I'm excited. WealthCon is April 18th to the 20th. So make sure you guys get your tickets below and uh, we'll catch you on the next podcast. Peace. If you want to disappear, get fat, and no one will notice you. That's just how it is. Greatest personal growth comes from having to lead, manage, organize people, make profits, etc. But you know, value is created from helping other people. Like, that's what makes a business valuable. That's what makes you valuable to other people.